One of the great attributes of Marshall University is the way we remember and honor our heritage. We are committed to fulfilling the promise of a better future and intent on building it by adding to our legacy each and every year and each and every day and remembering all that Marshall means and passionately work to achieve bold expectations. I absolutely believe in the power of expectations. We individually, collectively, and organizationally become the manifestation of those expectations. And I firmly believe that that's been the major catalyst that has driven us to where we are today and what will carry us into tomorrow. I would urge all of you, in whatever walk of life you are in, set high expectations, higher than you might think you can accomplish, because it's an incredible driving force to move mountains and to make the necessary changes that our world needs to see. No problem is too large nor insurmountable to a group of people who are committed and are passionate about making a new world happen. We at Marshall have very high expectations of ourselves and what, what we can accomplish. And as a result, today, we have a university that is very much on the rise. As you saw in some of the images, we have aspirations to take on another $100 million in new capital projects. And you might say to yourself, how can little old Marshall University do that? And I'll tell you, really good planning and absolute passion for making these expectations happen. With the help of Senator Bob Plymel and then Governor Joe Manchin, we have $25 million in funding from the state to apply toward a new biotechnology incubator and applied engineering complex on the campus of Marshall. That building will be built between the current Robert C. Byrd Biotechnology and Science Center and the current engineering building on 3rd Avenue. And you might say to yourself, what's there right now? a lot of parking <laughs> and I can assure you if we take all those parking places 270 of them we're gonna hear from a whole lot of people on campus so we're gonna build a vertical parking structure right next to the Joan C Edwards Playhouse to make up and actually improve on our parking situation and actually that location is ideal because it serves the, the Playhouse in terms of the special events we have there it serves the Student Memorial Center uh, which is very very important and then, of course, the found new Foundation Hall, where we have a lot of uh, special events and a lot of attendees, so it's a good location. The Fine Arts Incubator Project is actually located in downtown Huntington. I had the privilege of taking Senator Manchin through that facility to show them the potential. It's right across the street from Pullman Square. And the vision for this is truly an arts incubator. It's literally taking uh, the visual arts and moving them into the center of, of the community and saying to the community, we believe we can build a vibrant culture and a vibrant arts community in the downtown area that will merge the university with our community. And the most important aspect of this is that we want our students educated in an environment where they understand what it means to make a living on top of being an artist. And if you have a chance to see some of the incredibly talented artists that we have at Marshall University. I have their work showcased in my office uh, on campus. They are incredibly talented. And in many cases, they don't really know how talented they really are. And so this is a, a venue for us to begin to showcase not just Marshall University students, but artists from all over the region and what can happen in a vibrant art culture that could establish in the downtown area. We believe this is a very profound and important merger between the city of Huntington and Marshall University, and I would argue something that should have happened a long time ago. The indoor practice complex that you saw showcased here is actually three separate buildings, all interconnected. An indoor practice facility, a sports medicine translational research center, and an academic center. And that project is a very, very important project for the development and future of our intercollegiate athletics programs. For all of our outdoor sports, they will all benefit from it. And as importantly, the research center 
will focus on translational research that I believe will not only benefit student athletes, but any student on campus or anybody who exercises and is, in, uh, is prone to injury and how we can prevent it and treat it more effectively. And then we're going to build a new soccer stadium on the current site for the field house in Huntington. This is the veterans field house is becoming a very dilapidated structure. And uh, well, we wouldn't want to say this too, too, too loudly, it's beginning to be almost an embarrassment to our veterans. Uh, we feel that there's a change needed. We've talked with our veterans, they feel the same way. And this is an opportunity for Marshall to work with the community to take a dilapidated structure turn it into something that can be a pride and joy for the community as well as serve the needs of our uh, uh, sports program and, and soccer, both men's and women, and create a memorial that's befitting our veterans. And we are absolutely committed to doing that. At the same time, we're looking at this uh, array of projects and we already have funding strategies for how we're going to do this. We are undergoing about $17.6 million on campus this summer and into next summer on campus improvements. Um, Senator Manchin and I have had this conversation multiple times. You don't ignore your physical infrastructure and let it dilapidate. You take care of it, you nurture it, you attend to it, and handle all the maintenance that needs to be done, and we're absolutely committed to doing that. We had record in freshman enrollment in the fall of 2010. We expect to break that record this fall, and we expect to break the all-time record for enrollment at Marshall University. We have been, been committed to growing enrollment. We still have 75% of our students coming from the state of West Virginia. And we will continue to grow. The goal is to get to 15,000 full-time undergraduate students on the campus with another 5,000 students at the graduate level and professional uh, levels. And I think that's about the right size for the university. We have programs that are developing that can help us get there. As you saw, for, uh, pharmacy under the leadership of Dr. Kevin Yingling uh, is really taking off. Physical therapy under the leadership of Dr. Penny Kroll uh, is developing just as we expected. We're moving in terms of public health, uh, something sorely needed in the state of West Virginia. The engineering program is developing as we expected and we have tremendous opportunities in that field as well. And in the forensic science area, if you recall, our forensic science program is the number one ranked program in the country for all the right reasons. Uh, the digital forensics component of that uh, program is developing now at the undergraduate level. And we're moving into developing information security to work with Homeland Security and to offer new career paths and opportunities for students graduating from Marshall University. And those partnerships with federal intelligence ag agencies are going to be absolutely critical uh, to the future success of that. We had uh, Secretary uh, uh, Napolitano on campus recently for a uh, uh, Homeland Security Summit, and uh, her comment to me was, however many of those students you can graduate, we're going to hire them. And so this is an area of very fertile opportunity. Fiscal stability and, and sustainability efforts on the campus have yielded tremendous uh, results in terms of the finances of the university. Enrollment growth certainly has been a part of that, and anyone who doesn't understand the importance of enrollment growth uh, doesn't understand what it takes to uh, move a university the way we've been moving. And we need to keep moving in that direction. And to that end, we are moving towards signing an agreement with an international uh, recruiting firm to increase the number of international undergraduate students on the campus. Our target is to get to 1,500 students and grow from there. We currently are at 500. And we see absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be doing this because one of the great virtues of this is we bring the cultures and perspectives of international students to Huntington, to the Huntington campus. And it's a great melting pot for our students, especially West Virginia students who find it difficult to financially afford to go overseas. It brings the overseas intercultural experience to the campus. And we are absolutely committed to moving in that direction. I mentioned the new athletic facilities, but the new athletic leadership is of paramount importance. And uh, under the leadership of our new athletic director, Mike Hamrick, and uh, our new uh, uh, head football coach, Doc Holliday, and our men's uh, basketball coach, uh, Tom Herrian, we are being, really seeing the signs of resurgence of what all of us want to see in a successful uh, athletics program at Marshall. Um, 
we have a uh, recent graduate with us this evening uh, who was a, uh, a superstar on the women's volleyball team and who is also is a Jaeger scholar. Uh, she just graduated. Uh, she's moving on to graduate school. Liz Fleming, I see you there. Good to see you. Liz is the personification of very high academic excellence and very high athletic performance. And speaking of athletic performance, uh, both coaches uh, told me this evening that in the first summer term, both our football team, which is virtually every one of our players who were there for summer one, and uh, most of our men's basketball uh, team finished with uh, combined GPAs over 3.0 for the summer, which, which further affirms that Marshall University is about a holistic approach to what we do throughout the university, and uh, that includes uh, very high expectations in terms of what our student athletes do academically. We have made a decision and a movement to modernize all of our classrooms on the campus. Uh, that modernization effort will begin this summer and will carry out over the next three years. Uh, we are working to improve campus life uh, on the campus. And as we continue into the future, we realize that investments are what matter most. And the investments that I talked about earlier are what we're really all about investing in people, investing in futures, and investing in what it takes to generate the kind of success that you as alumni and friends of the university expect and I as, as president demand. This is something that this university is absolutely committed to. It is what distinguishes Marshall University from so many other universities. It is the people of Marshall University who make the greatest difference. You are those people. And you're here tonight because you believe in this university and you believe in the future and you believe in the success. And I believe collectively we can move and accomplish anything we set out to accomplish. And we will. Thank you all for joining us this evening. And go hurt. When Dr. Kopp called me two years ago and offered me the job, I told him to be the athletic director here. I was the athletic director at uh, University of Nevada at Las Vegas. And I, and I told Dr. Kopp I needed a couple days to... Uh, make a decision and I, I can always remember then Governor Manchin picked up the phone and called me and tried to convince me to come back to Marshall University and uh, uh, Senator Manchin I still wish you were governor because I need some help in football scheduling but uh, I always appreciate uh, is that true doc yeah, that's right. But Senator Manchin, I really, I really appreciate that, and, and that, that always meant a great deal to me. As many of you know, we combined uh, this event tonight, the President's State of the Union, with our annual Big Green Coaches Tour. And we have many uh, people here from, from the athletic side of it, and you're going to get a treat tonight. You're going to get an opportunity to hear our football coach, and you're going to get an opportunity to hear our basketball coach speak tonight and, and I, I can tell you as Dr. Kopp says the future looks bright for our athletic program. We have two experienced seasoned coaches coaching our flagship programs and I think you've already seen the progress uh, in in their first year. They're both starting their second year. I was very fortunate uh, to be able to have the opportunity to hire both a head football coach and a head basketball coach, and I think we hit the jackpot. What we have to do is we have to support them. And as you look around and see the pictures of the facilities that we would like to build over the next two years, that's what we need to do to make these coaches uh, successful. Uh, Dr. Kopp mentioned uh, we, uh, Liz Fleming, one of our athletes. We have several former athletes in here, and, and I, I always I'm afraid to, to mention them by name, but uh, if you're a former athlete, raise your hand and be recognized. There we got some. We got, yeah, we got, let's give them some. <laughs> do, do, Dr. Kopp failed to mention Liz Fleming uh, was Conference USA first team, all Conference USA postgraduate award winner. She had a perfect 4.0 
with a degree in international affairs and French, so I'm not sure what that means. And <laughs> she, she, she's a typical Marshall student athlete. She's a great athlete, she's a great person, and she's a great student. And uh, Senator Manchin, you missed out because she's working in Senator McConnell's office. So <laughs> she, she, she told me not to tell you that, but. As long as you tell me other things, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, Liz just graduated and we're so proud of her. And, and I, I don't want to single out any, any of our former athletes because we have so many of them here, but we, we always talk about Pam Tab and what a great job she does. Well, not many people talk about her husband, Roy. And, and Roy, stand up. I want to recognize you. Roy was, now listen to this, Roy, Roy plays, thank, Roy plays a great role in the history of Marshall University athletics. He came to Marshall University right after the plane crash, and he was a member of the Young Thundering Herd. And the dedication and the desire and what he gave to Marshall University and Marshall University Athletics to get the program back to where it is today. Roy, the young thundering herd always has a special place in my heart and I wanted to recognize you tonight. And he was one hell of a player too, so thank you. With, with that, I'll, I'd like to uh, introduce our basketball coach. Uh, uh, a little more than a year ago, uh, our, our basketball coach abruptly left, uh, uh, had the opportunity to have a, a nationwide search, and it kept going to one place. It kept going to, to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Tom Herrian was the associate head coach at Pittsburgh. The three years he was there, they were the winningest program in college basketball. Tom also was a head coach for four years and won 80 games. Even I can figure out that average is out to 20 games wins a season and, and just did a, a, a phenomenal job. He, he had some first this year. We'd never beaten Memphis since we joined Conference USA. We beat Memphis. Uh, we, beat, we beat our arch rival up north uh, in, in uh, Charleston, WVU. And, and that was that was one happy moment when we were up 27 midway through the second half. So we, we, Coach Harry and I really enjoyed that. But I'm going to bring him up here and let him say a few words to us. The future of our basketball program's in great hands. Coach Tom Harry. You know, I'm humbled to be here. Uh, you know, I, Dr. Kopp and, and Mike uh, offered us the opportunity to visit with you. Uh, it's humbling to have the opportunity, not many places, and I've been a lot of good places around the country. I, at the University of Virginia for four years, and they consider themselves the best public university in America. Been at the Big East in the Big East twice now, and um, I'm humbled because it doesn't it doesn't happen often that you're able to bring the academic side and the athletic side together at an event like this, and the political uh, spectrum as well. Um, it was a hotel room in Indianapolis, Indiana, uh, at the Final Four two years ago that Mike and I met. We talked about the job, and I shared with him my thoughts about the vision and what I thought I could do with the basketball program and the history that you have. Then I asked Mike a simple question. Mike, why should I leave Pitt? Uh, I've got the best assistant coach, associate head coaching job in America. Why should I leave there? And Mike was pretty candid. He says, Tom, we know who we are. We know what we're all about. But most importantly, you're going to have an understanding of what type of people and the passion that represent Marshall University and the great state of West Virginia. Uh, I was living, living in Pittsburgh. I had a taste of... Uh, of what the people in West Virginia were like when I, when I was at Pitt. It didn't treat me too well in Morgantown. Uh, uh, and I haven't been let down in the, over a year I've been uh, your head coach. Um, uh, every stop of the way, uh, the passion that you uh, have shown to us and to myself uh, as we restore this basketball program. I didn't come to rebuild it. Uh, I came to restore it, elevate it, and take it to new heights. Uh, that's our goal. Uh, I'm pleased with the foundation that we put in place in year one. Uh, inherited some very talented young men. I think that uh, we've obviously increased our talent level immensely going into year two. Uh, Mike mentioned it. One thing that makes me a little nervous, I'm not real, a lot of firsts. I'm not good with these firsts thing. You know, we beat Memphis for the first time. Uh, that's got to start becoming a little bit more of, a, uh, of the norm. Uh, uh, and uh, as my, Mike and Dr. Kopp, and one, uh, Dr. Kopp met, met with me in his office before the, you know, on, on the visit when I came down. He, you know, I talked about my, my stay at Pitt and our, our competitiveness with WVU. And I said, well, I'll, I'll make you look good, Dr. Kopp. And 
it was a Wednesday night, I think, in mid-January. I made you look real good down in Charleston against WVU. <laughs> so uh, we like beating them. Uh, and uh, so I'm excited. I'm excited to be your coach. I'm, I'm humbled to be a part of this uh, community because uh, it does represent a unique situation. Again, having been in higher education at different stops for over 20 plus years, this, uh, our university means so much to this community and to our state. Uh, it's really unique and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. I think there's a level of excitement, uh, I hope, anticipation for next season. Uh, and obviously some expectations, and I think expectations are good. That means you have a chance to be good. So if I don't screw us up, I think we could be pretty good next year. Uh, I'm not going to try and start coaching too much. Uh, I'm just going to try and let our players play. But uh, I'm thrilled to be your coach. Uh, it's a great, I think timing in life is everything, and the timing of, of change, especially in our athletic program, hiring a new athletic director in Mike Hamrick, who's a great leader, uh, and that's obviously a credit to Dr. Kopp and our board. Uh, and then hiring two of your flagship coaches in, in football and basketball. It doesn't happen very often. And so the winds of change have swept through our campus as a whole and our athletic program in particular. And I think people are, are, are excited to be on board. And, and as someone said to me earlier, they said, Coach, it's great for you to be here. Appreciate you coming. And we appreciate you coming because this is your university. And we are uh, a big part of it, a small part of it, however you want uh, us to be. Uh, it's a special place. And they said, I said, you know, they said it's a great day to be a Marshall Thunder and Herd uh, fan. And I said, you know what, in all due respect, I, I really disagree. I think every day is a great day to be a part of Marshall Thunder and Herd Nation. Thank you very much. You know, as your head coach for one year, I've learned two things for sure. I've learned, number one, that we can and will win a championship. There's no doubt in my mind that will happen. And the other thing I've learned is, as I had, I've been very fortunate, Mike mentioned I've been coaching for 30 years and been a lot of great places. I was at uh, University of Florida, won a national championship with Coach Meyer, which at the University of Florida, you got the biggest budgets in the history of college football. You got the swamp. You got 100,000 season tickets. You got it all. Uh, it's a great place. I uh, also was at NC State, which the budget was unlimited, and spent a lot of years at West Virginia. But after being the head football coach at Marshall, I can tell you one thing. I don't know how many people were at that banquet on Friday night prior to our spring game, but we honored all the ex-coaches that were there. I know, I know several people. I know John Hess and several people were there. But they all had one common thing to say from, from Sonny Randall to Stan Parrish, to Jack Lingle, to, John, uh, to Elwood, uh, to Bobby Pruitt, to Jim Don, and that Marshall University was the greatest place they've ever coached. From, from everyone, they said that Stan Parrish has won a Super Bowl. He's also won a national championship in football. That they all said the same thing. And as your head football coach, I understand that. And the reason being, I know, I know uh, Roy will tell you this, uh, when he started in 1971, it's because of what happened in plane crash in 1970. There's not a team in, in America where their football team more, means more to their fan base, uh, more to the state, uh, more to the community than what Marshall does. And again, I understand that. I make sure our players understand it from the time they get on campus. And I embrace that. As your head coach, I embrace it. And I'm looking forward to getting you back to where you deserve and that is winning championships. Uh, Mike had mentioned uh, also about the facilities. Kids buy with their eyes. Uh, we had a great recruiting class this year. Just imagine what we're going to be able to do and what we will do when we get those facilities you just saw. And uh, we, got, we all got to rally behind that. And the one thing Mike and I talk about all the time is guys, we are no longer in conference. We're no longer in the MAC. We're no longer in one double A. We're in a conference, Conference USA, that's a better football conference than what the Big East is at this point. At the end of the year, Conference USA had two teams finish in the top 25. The Big East had zero. You know, that being said, Mike talked about our schedule. I, I'm excited about that schedule. I'm going to embrace that schedule. Uh, my plan right now is to go win all 12 of them. <laughs> our, 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 you know, I know. I know your players are going to embrace it. And the thing that we need, you know, you know, Tom talked about atmosphere and all that. I don't know how many of you remember the atmosphere we had that night uh, at West Virginia in Huntington last year we played, when we played West Virginia. That atmosphere was as good atmosphere as I've ever been around. That, that atmosphere, in order for us to be successful and to go win championships, which is what we're going to do, has to be our norm. And again, that's, that's, that's what has to happen. Uh, your football team right now, I think we fixed a lot of areas. Defensively, we're fixed. I mean, we've got, we've got talent on defense. I do know one thing after being through this league for one year, the quickest way for us to go win a championship in this league is to play great defense. If you look at the championship game uh, for Conference USA, it was, it was Central Florida, who was number one in the league in total defense, and it was SMU who was number three. As bad as we were early, we finished number four in the league. And defensively, the talent-wise, this time a year ago, I was sitting here, and I didn't know who our, who our corners were even going to be or who our secondary was going to be because I had to fire a couple guys because they weren't living right. Right now, that's the strength of our team is our secondary. Our linebackers are athletic and can run. We got five new ones on campus. 
our defensive line's in good shape. I'm proud of Vinny Curry. Some of you guys read about Vinny Curry all the time. Vinny Curry's a guy, and, and being in this business at a lot of great places and, seeing, and going with a lot of great players, a lot of times guys make poor decisions on whether or not they're going to go out early. And they make poor decisions because they don't trust their coaches. They don't do a good job listening to the right people. Vinny trusted his coaches. Uh, there's been one person in Vinny Curry's family that ever graduated from college, and that was his aunt, who's a medical doctor. And Vinny will be the second one who'll graduate in December, but he listened to his aunt. Uh, we're proud to have Vinny back, and our defense will be in good hands with Coach Rippon, those defensive coach. I think we've got a shot at being really good. Uh, offensively, we have to fix two areas. Uh, our skill guys are wide outs. Uh, we added a guy by the name of Trayvon Van. A couple people have been talking to me about we'll have as good a wide outs and as good a running backs as anybody in the conference and a lot of play in the country as far as our tailbacks are concerned. We have to fix our offensive line. I said many times when I talked to these uh, big green events and functions, I watched his offensive line a year ago, and I won't say this fun, but I got sick watching, to be honest. I didn't like anything about them. They didn't like football. They weren't tough, and football wasn't important to them. That's not the case now. We're young, but they're talented, and they, they work extremely hard, and we've got to fix the quarterback position. Now, we got a guy, we, got, we need another Byron Lethbridge, right, like right here in Washington, D.C., or a Chad Pennington. And people say all the time, Doc, we need to win a championship. I said, when I get me a Byron or a Chad or a Tebow or a Chris Leak or a Phillip Rivers or one of those guys, because that's a position that's a, such an intangible position that takes such great leadership skills where they set standards, everybody's up to those standards. But we've got guys on campus that uh, I like. Uh, they're working extremely hard. By the time we get on that bus to get ahead to Morgantown uh, sometime in September on Sunday, whatever that date is, we'll have a quarterback that'll take a snap. But again, my expectations are extremely high. Uh, my standards are extremely high, and your, your players' standards are the same way. Don't lower your standards. I don't care who in the hell we play. Don't lower them. Let's go play them, and uh, let's go find a way to win, it, win those football games. But appreciate you having us, and it's been a great event, and uh, it's great seeing everybody. Thanks. I left Marshall in 1980, uh, moved all over the country, North Carolina, Illinois, Kansas, Nevada, Arkansas, and didn't really know much about what happened to Marshall for that 30-year period other than what I would read in the newspaper or hear from my, friend, from my friends. Uh, but I can tell you, everywhere that I went, I was able to get good jobs in my field and compete for good jobs because of the degree that I received from Marshall University. Marshall University is a great university. And I'm a guy that's only been back a year and a half. It's a great university. It has great leadership. We have a great president. He's the reason why I came back to Marshall, because I really believed that he had the vision to take the university and our athletic program to a level that we've never been at before. The leadership is there. The passion for Marshall fans and alumni are as good as anywhere I've ever been. I've been at East Carolina. I've been at University of Kansas. I've been at UNLV. There's no more passionate fans than Marshall University. We have a great university. I got a great degree. My wife got a good degree. My daughter's going to be a junior this year at Marshall. So we're moving in the right directions. From an athletic standpoint, like Coach Holliday said and Coach Herrian said, we're at a whole different level than we've ever been at before. We're in a conference that over the last five years, those schools have put over $500 million into their athletic facilities. $500 million. Besides a softball stadium and some renovations and some, a few nice things, we really haven't done much the last five years, but with the vision of Dr. Kopp and the way he's driven this vision forward with these athletic facilities, and I would ask you to go look at the pictures uh, before you leave, it's, it's going to be a new era in Marshall Athletics. We have to build facilities to keep up. The next two to three years are a critical stage in the history of Marshall University athletics. We're either going to get left behind or we're going to move forward. And we have that choice because that choice was on that screen and that choice was over here on these pictures. 
Coach Holliday and Coach Herring always say to me, Mike, when we bring recruits in, they buy with their eyes. They buy with their eyes. And if we're able to do these facilities and build them, which I'm convinced we are, the sky's the limit. When we announced $30 million worth of athletic facilities that Dr. Kopp mentioned, I got a call from a newspaper in, in West Virginia, in Charleston, West Virginia, that the first question was, Mike, there's no way that Marshall University can raise the money <coughs> needed to build these facilities. Why do you think that can happen, you can do that? And I thought for a second and I said, how many football programs ever rebuilt from zero? I can only think of one. We rebuilt our football program from scratch, from nothing. Roy was a part of that. Several other of us in here were a part of that. To the winningest program in the 90s, to a Division I program, and as Doc Holliday said, one of the best conferences in the country. And I said, if we can do that, we can build facilities for our student athletes to continue to win championships. We're going to ask every Marshall alumni supporter to help us with these facilities. Whether it's a little or a lot, we're going to ask you. And I'm one to believe with our history and our passion and what we're all about, this time next year, you're going to see dirt being turned over. And you're going to see these two coaches continue to improve their programs like they already have. I believe that's going to happen. We're going to ask you that. In closing, uh, it's been great to include our coaches. Dr. Kopp, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here. We have many Big Green members here. Uh, if you're not a member of the Big Green Scholarship Fund, uh, it goes to provide scholarships for student athletes like Liz. Roy came to Marshall on a football scholarship in 1971. Uh, they're quality people. Our student athletes are quality people. We need support to provide the scholarships to get these kids the education that they need to be successful. Uh, it's, it's an honor. Uh, it's a privilege to be here tonight. I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, this is really our first athletic Big Green event in the Washington, D.C. area or where it's Big Green, and I think we have over 70, close to eight, John, 80, 75, 76 people here for that. I want to thank you for coming. We have several season ticket holders in here for football and basketball, and I want to thank you for that. And uh, we're going to continue to come to this area and promote and sell Marshall University. And even though we haven't made an official announcement, uh, we will in the near future. Uh, we're going to play a football game uh, over here pretty close to you guys here in the, in, in the near future that I think you're going to really, really enjoy. So thanks for listening to me. Thanks for listening to Coach Holliday.